Hi guys, Jonathan Chown here with J Chown Golf at Crondon Park Golf Club in Essex. And today we're getting into the driver and three nice simple tips out there for you to hit this driver straight. And I wouldn't even say they're tips, I say they're must haves in there to hit this driver straight or straighten up that ball flight. Really key little things here that you must have. You can't have one without the other. So before we get into that, please make sure you like and you subscribe. Helps my channel out a ton. Please click that like button and hit that subscribe. Go for it, you won't be disappointed. So what we're gonna talk about with driver today. You might be a golfer out there who, let's say, slices the golf ball, or you might be a golfer who hooks it. You're just hitting it too far offline. Now, there's a couple things we need in there for driver, and we'll get into, really, those three things in nice detail. But the first most important one, this is for, really, most things in the golf swing completely, to hitting driver straight, but as well, any club straight, and that is making sure your club face is square. So making sure your club face is square. And most importantly, we're gonna make sure the club face is square on the takeaway. So that first move off the ball, because if it's not square there, we're gonna to have to make compensations in our golf swing. So this relates to grip a little bit. So with grip, whether we've got a standard, we've got a strong, we've got a weak, we can make it square kind of with any type of grip. It will be easy with the standard. But if we get into the first bit of square club face, the first thing for straighter drives, we want, when we're coming back in our takeaway, so our first move, we want this club to be nice and square. So what we've got to do here, what's a good little measurement of what's square, is you can see from your point of view here how this angle of the club face here is matching the angle of my back. Because we're swinging on an arc around our body, that is square to it, because you can see if I'm moving on an arc, that's going square along that arc line going around my body. So that's how we can see a nice square club face. If I continue to take the club up to the top, can see it's at that nice kind of 45 kind of angle and that's how we can then present the club back to the ball properly with a nice square face so this is not like back in the day of having the like the toe up type of look there that's wide open because if we've got our arc going around that is definitely an open club face it's not here pointing towards the ground because that's closed if we're coming to the ball we're going to hit it really far left so a good little thing we can do here guys imagine if i've got a glove on because i don't i don't usually play with a glove now, if I have a glove, the underside of my hand here, so really where my glove logo would be. A good little thing to get a square takeaway or a square club face in the takeaway. It's a good one for standard and it's a good one for, let's say, weaker grip. So if we're taking this club back, I would want my logo of the glove here pointing a little bit down and away from me. You can see really here, I'm just getting it pointing diagonally down, so it's more pointing round in this area. You can see as soon as I get that logo of that glove pointing down there, you can see my club face is nicely square. If I get this logo of my glove, my imaginary glove there pointing away from me, so let's say dead in front of me there, you can see how now with my standard grip, club face has opened up quite a bit. Now conversely, if I went really with that logo pointing down to the ground, how that club face has really shut off as well. So we wanna make sure that that logo is pointing diagonally down in front of us to make sure that club face is matching our back angle. So we can really make sure that this club face is nice and square. Because if this club face isn't square, we're gonna really struggle to start that ball on line. Our body will start to make compensations in the swinger, right? A really common one, if that club face opens up, will be a golfer trying to manage that open club face by swinging over the top to really make sure that club face is somewhat working functionally with their path. So they'd have to make sure their path is going very far to the left to accompany that. That's how club face can dictate a lot of things in the golf swing. So if this bit's off, we need to make sure this is on there first. So let's get to the second little tip here. So second tip here, guys, now this is probably almost the most important one, to be perfectly honest, and that is center contact. So we really wanna be making sure that we are hitting as close to the center of the club face as possible, because if we are slightly hitting it toe, we're gonna to hit it a little bit more left, depending on our swing path going for it, and as well, slightly off the heel, we're always gonna be leaking it out to the right, depending on our swing path as well, and our club face going through the ball. We always wanna make sure that our strike is nicely centered you see the guys out on tour, how straight they hit it or how little curve they have on the ball. You should see the wear marks on their clubs. They are all out the middle there. Now strike is a good little one to practice because strike we can end up working on and getting better at it regardless of what our golf swing's like, which is good. It's a skill on its own, which is a good thing. And I think the most important thing any golfer should have on their bag, let's say when they're practicing to work on this, is athlete's powder foot spray. Best 
thing ever for golf. It's probably the best training aid out there, the best feedback kind of training practice kind of aid. So really what we're gonna do here, now you've probably seen this on quite a few other, maybe Instagram or YouTube videos. What we're gonna do, we're gonna spray this driver. Now, when we spray that driver full of it, we're gonna see that if we have the slightest indentation going through the ball, when we hit that, we're gonna see a mark. So as soon as we hit that ball, we're gonna see an indentation in that little bit there. So on the club face, so we're gonna to start to see where that ball comes up. So we know it's not gonna be perfect. As soon as we go and hit it, it's definitely not gonna be. We might, then we'll start to see a pattern evolve. We might be very hill side, might be very toe side. And that can give you a little key on as well is when you're hitting those, you might go, oh, that's why I'm missing the ball out to the right because they're all off the hill all the time. But it's a good thing. Yes, we can work on technical things in our golf swing to get better at that, but we can also think, right, I just want to hit it on this different part of the club face, and then it's going to make me hit it a little bit straighter. So if I'm really missing it off the hill, I can think, right, I've got to go more on the toe side, and I'll go bang around at the middle. Now, let's see how I do with one here. So we're going to see, and it's probably not going to be the best. This is my first swing of the day. So it's probably not going to be the best one. I'll be very surprised if I hit it out the middle, but we'll have a good look. That fell off the hill to me. And yep, it was there. When we walk and see, the camera's picked that up quite off the hill there. So what I'll be doing there, guys, if I'm thinking, right, I've hit a shot right off the hill, I've got to change it a little bit. I've got to make sure that, right, I've hit my first one off the hill. I've got to make sure, right, let's think if I'm hitting it a little bit toey. Let's go a little bit on the toe side and then it will really get a little bit more recalibrated out the middle. So let's go a little bit more on the toe side. That was a good drive. Nudged it a little bit. So that's how much you have to feel. I nudged it about that much there. So a great way to practice this. So really, if we are working and we're hitting balls and we're seeing a pattern evolve like I have, I've hit two balls out the here, hill here, albeit I'm not warmed up, so I'm probably going to. But then we can see, right, I need to now shift my focus to hitting it more on the toe because that will then equal it out at the middle. So let's go really feel like I'm hitting it off the toe. Now it'll probably go out the middle. Wasn't the best of drives. There we go. More out the middle there, high middle, so not too bad. So we can really see there, this is one bit that we really need to hone in there to be able to hit it consistently straight is strike. Make sure strike is there and then golf will be a hell of a lot easier to control your ball flight. So let's, after that, let's get to the third little bit here. Now this is all about swing path. We need swing path in there to hit a straight shot. So really to control that curvature. Let's get into that. So guys, if you made it this far through in the video, you're in luck because this is the bit that's really gonna control curvature on the shot. So this is gonna give you the straight look of your drives. Now, even if it's not dead straight, that's quite unrealistic. We want it to be a very slight curve. Now we will get away with some straight ones every so often, which is quite nice. So this is swing path. So when what swing path is the angle that we're coming, the path which we're traveling through the ball. So whether that's on an out to in path, traveling from the outside of the ball inwards across our body, or whether we're the opposite going from in, so inside here, the swing path, and then exiting on the outside, we'll terminal our shot. So the more we are coming more round on the outside, depending on the club face, the more left to right slice curvature we're gonna have on it, the more from the inside, again, depending on the club face going through the ball as well, the more right to left hooky type of curvature we're gonna get to it. So you can see here, I've set up myself a little drill here. Now this little drill is set up for someone, let's say who they're struggling with a slice. So that'll be a lot more of you guys out there struggling with a slice. Now when we're working on swing path, I find it brilliant to work on what's called avoidance drills. Now I'll put a card up there for the very first video I put up on this channel, which is all about these kind of drills, avoidance drills for controlling your curve. Now really with these avoidance drills, what we wanna make sure we're doing is we wanna set them up in a way where they're blocking are excessive swing path. So let's say again, we're a slicer, we really swing over, like we're over the top, really swing from out to in there. You can see how I put this alignment stick, I'm gonna hit the alignment stick if I swing overly out to in. So what we've got to do for this is we've got to calm down our swing path just to miss it. Now the good great thing about these drills is we'll naturally try to swing underneath because it creates such a strong response of not hitting the stick. Our body will try its hardest to swing underneath that stick and to swing more towards the right. So we're swinging more into out. From here, it will neutralize our excessive swing path and get us swinging 
pretty close. So for me, this would be more of a drawery shot because I already swing into out. So all I will do here, I'll be putting this basket and it's about half a club distance by my ball, a little bit outside it. So it's just blocking an overly out to in swing path. So if I just nip a little one down there, good, there's a little draw, which is for me, it would always draw with this. But if you're a slicer of the golf ball, really out to in, this is gonna control that excessive bit of swing path. Nice, easy kind of drill to do. So very simple one here. I mean, if you're a guy who got your, got your stuff over the face, got your foot spray, working on your club face. If those two are down there and you're, let's say an over the top slicer and you get this drill in there, can guarantee that ball's gonna go straighter. Absolutely guarantee it. So for a slicer, that's all well and good. But what happens if you're someone like myself who will struggle from a left one on occasions? Well, saying that, we can easily just move this basket with the stick in it. So as we can see with our upturn basket, I've just moved this so it's more on the inside now. So now I've got to move that, otherwise I'll be standing on it. Now it's more on the inside path. So if I go extremely from into out there, so I have to adjust that just a little bit. So if I swing too much from into out, I'm probably going to hit the stick or hit the basket. So again, it's going to give me feedback and it's going to force me to be a little bit closer to my swing path, just where I want to be, because we want our swing path to be fairly neutral, to be hitting a straighter shot. So again, it's the same concept if we are hooking the golf ball or slicing the golf ball. We just put something in here that is blocking our extreme path. And again, let me hit one. This will probably fade if anything. This is gonna stop me from getting extra trapped behind me and it will straighten up my ball flow. If I'm focusing on club face and I've got spray on there trying to hit the middle, I'll be hitting a straighter shot. But may probably be a little fade here most likely or straight. I got the swing path, I just pulled it left a little bit, but I can tell you I've got the swing path in there nicely. I was actually swinging more to the left, more out to in there, which for me is great, that's awesome. So, well, we can see that's a nice little drill we can do just to get this swing path a little bit more honed in, because we can't have extremes in swing path once you hit the ball straight, it just won't work out there, guys. So, nice, easy kind of three-step guide. Now, this is for any golfer out there, whether you're high handicap or low handicap, these are the three things you need to hit the ball straight. You need your club face to be square. You need to have a nice strike out the middle of the club face. You need to be somewhat close to that middle of the club face. And also you need to be making sure your swing path isn't too far off. You need it to be quite close to being on plane. So if, as well, if you're setting up a camera and you're drawing your swing path line on like a swing app, making sure it's going up the shaft line and going up there and you're making sure your club is staying as close to that line as possible. Those are the things you need to hit that ball a hell of a lot straighter. If any of those are out, let's say your strikes out, your swing path and your, and your face is good, you could hit, let's say, a necky fade out there. And vice versa, if your swing path and your strike's good, but your club face is wide open, you're gonna push it. So, what we can see there, nice, easy step guide there. Really, if any of you guys are ever really having any time where you're struggling with this, watch back this video and it'll become nice and clear. So if you like that, guys, please press that like, hit subscribe, it helps me out a ton. If you wanna watch nice, easy to understand golf instruction, that's to the point, J Chown Golf is where it's at. So. Let's get working on these little bits and drive will be a lot less daunting and we'll be able to hit it a hell of a lot straighter.